Hey everyone, let's do a free response question for the 2018 AP exam. All you have to do is Google 2018 free response questions, AP Calculus AB, and it'll pop up. We're going to start with number three, which is the first non-calculator question. So here's the problem. The graph of the continuous function g, the derivative of the function f, is shown above. So I'm going to stop and write down what I just read. The continuous function g is the derivative of f. So I'm going to write down g equals f prime. Right? So that's the connection between g and f. So this graph that we're given here is actually f prime. The function g is piecewise linear from negative 5 to 3. So these are all line segments until you get to 3. And then you have this parabola, 2 times x minus 4, the quantity squared, between 3 and 6. Great. If f of 1 equals 3, what is the value of f of negative 5? Now they're talking about f. What we're looking at is f prime, right? So to go from f prime to f, we need to integrate, right? f is the integral of g dx, okay? And the way you integrate is you actually need two numbers to integrate, a to b. We don't integrate at a point. We integrate from one point to another. And so they that's why they gave us this initial condition here. They gave us one point so that we could find the value of the other. So I'm going to set up an integral. I'm going to say, okay, let's do the integral from, do I want to go from 1 to negative 5? It makes more sense to go from negative 5 to 1. This is a good habit. I always go from lower to upper. If you switch these two limits of integration, it negates your answer. So I always try to go from low to high if I'm setting up the integral myself. So what am I integrating? I'm integrating g because I want to know what f is, right? So the integral of g of x from negative 5 to 1. Well, what's that equal to, right? Well, the integral of g is f. So that's going to be f of 1 minus f of negative 5. The integral of g is f evaluated at the upper minus the lower. That's called the fundamental theorem of calculus. Key idea number one from this video is the fundamental theorem of calculus. Does that sound important to you? It's fundamental. So the idea is that the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx is equal to f of b minus f of a. Now this is something you already know as the definite integral. To integrate a function from a to b, you plug in the upper minus the lower after you integrate, right? So let's see how this applies to the problem. Okay, now let's actually solve for each of these pieces here. So to integrate g, I have a graph of g. How do you integrate a graph? Key concept number two is that to integrate a picture, you calculate the net signed area bound between the curve and the x-axis. So let's start at negative 5 and we're going to go to 1. But from negative 5 to negative 1 here, I've got negative area, right? So let's calculate that negative signed area. So this shaded area. It is a trapezoid. I could use trapezoids, but I think most of you would probably break this up into a rectangle or a square, whatever this is, and a triangle. All right, so let's do it. So this rectangular section is 3 by 3, so it is a square. So that's got an area of 9, and I'm going to write negative 9. And the area of the skinny triangle down here, it's 1 by 3. So 1 half base times height is going to give us 3 halves. So I'm going to write down negative 3 halves, right? So these two together, negative 3 halves plus negative 18 halves is negative 21 halves. And if you can't do that in your head like I just did, that really hurt my brain, um, get a common denominator and combine those, all right? Now there's no area from negative 1 to 0, but there is a little bit of area from 0 to 1. There's some positive area. So we want to find this area here. Right? And that is a 1 by 2 triangle. So 1 half base times height. 1 half 1 times 2 is just going to be positive 1. Right? All right. So overall, what's the, the net area there? It's going to be negative 21 halves plus positive 1, which I'm going to write as 2 halves. So I get uh, negative 19 halves. See, geometry comes in handy. Okay, negative 19 halves. That's equal to, 
Let's go up here. F of one, which we were given. F of one is three minus what we want to find, f of negative five. That's what we want to solve for. So this is my equation here that I want to solve. Okay, I want to solve for this. So how would you do that? Would you subtract three from both sides? I'm a positive person, so I'd add this over to that side and I would add this over to that side. That's algebra, it's all moving pieces across the equal sign. So that would leave you with, I'll go over here, f of negative five equals three plus 19 over two. And you could leave it like this on the AP, or it's pretty easy to make this 6 over 2 plus 19 over 2 is 25 over 2. And that is our final answer for part A. So hopefully that's worth a couple of points. On to part B. So part B wants us to evaluate the integral from 1 to 6 of g of x. So again, we want to integrate this graph that we're given. And so we're going to try to use geometry if we can. And from 1 to 6, let's see, from 1 to 3... We can use geometry. The area of this square section here is just 2 by 2, which is 4. All right, so that's part of the answer. I'll call that A1. But the second part of the uh, answer is going to be the area under this parabola, which we have the equation for. So we're actually going to have to integrate that, right? So we're going to integrate from 3 to 6 uh, this function here. Okay, now I could FOIL this out and distribute the two, um, or I could contemplate, I could consider U substitution since this is an inner. And since this is linear, this is X to the first power, this is actually gonna be a nice, easy U substitution that's gonna work, all right? So if I let U be the inner part, DU DX, the derivative is just one. Okay, and if I cross multiply that, I get du equals dx, right? So I'm just going to replace the dx with a du. That's why I said this was simple. That happens whenever the inner function is linear, all right? So let me make my substitution here. So I'm going to do the integral. It's going to be 2u squared. You could even pull the 2 out of the integral symbol if you want. dx just becomes du. And now I'm also going to change these boundaries. If I plug 3 in, right, 3 minus 4 is negative 1. And if I plug 6 in for x, 6 minus 4 is 2. So those are the new numbers to plug in. Those are now u values, all right? So let's integrate. The 2, the constant multiple, comes down. The integral of u squared is u cubed over 3 from negative 1 to 2. All right, so now I'm just going to plug those in. I'm going to plug in upper minus lower. Upper is 2, so 2 cubed is 8. So I get 16 thirds when I multiply by that 2. Plug in negative 1, you're going to get negative 2 thirds. So I get 16 thirds minus negative 2 thirds. That means plus, so I get 18 thirds, which is 6. Now, that's not the final answer. Don't forget what you're doing. That's the second portion of the area. So 4 plus 6 is 10. That's the answer. Time for part C. For x is between negative 5 and 6, on what open intervals, if any, is the graph of f both increasing and concave up? So for that part, I have to remember what we wrote down at the beginning was that g is f prime, because again, they're asking about f. So f is increasing. So the idea here is, if they're asking about f, I'm going to rephrase the question in terms of what I'm given, which is g. Key concept number three is a real important one for the entire course. It's how to rephrase your knowledge in terms of what you're given. So if you're given G, you want to rephrase the question in terms of that function. So F is increasing. So first of all, F is increasing. That means that F prime is positive. That's not what you should think. Okay, you have to make this connection. F increasing, the definition, the calculus definition of increasing is positive slope, meaning the derivative is positive. Derivative is slope, right? F prime is positive. That's G. Okay, so I'm going to translate this into a statement about G. So where is G positive? So that's what I really want to think. And then... And F is concave up. So let me think about that. I'll go up here. So F is concave up. 
What's the def calculus definition of concave up? That's when the second derivative is positive. All right, so f double prime. What's f double prime? Well, let's go down the ladder one step. f double prime would be g single prime, right? So I want to find out where g prime is positive. Ah, so now I can look at the picture of g and I can find out where is g above the x-axis, positive, and its slope is positive, so it's increasing. So don't look at anything to the left of zero. But here we go. How about from zero to one? and also from four to six, right? That's gonna be my answer for part C. So I'm gonna say F is increasing and concave up on the open intervals zero to one and four to six. And now I have to justify, I have to give a reason. So I'm going to say since uh, f prime, which equals g, is positive, and f double prime, which equals g single prime, is positive. And the way I'm saying positive is greater than zero. So that's my answer for part C. Final part, here's part D. Find the x-coordinate of each point of inflection of the graph of f. Again, they're asking about f. Give a reason for your answer. So I'm going to just write this one more time. g is f prime. So they want inflection points of f. So let me think. An inflection point for f is where f double prime changes sign. Right? That's an inflection point. It's where the concavity of a graph changes. So it's where the second derivative changes from positive to negative or from negative to positive. Now, again, I'm going to use that key idea. Um, I'm going to rephrase this in terms of g. So f double prime, go down the ladder, is g single prime. So I want to find out where g single prime changes sign. And g single prime is the slope of g. So I want to find out where slope of g changes. All right, so where does the slope change? Let's see. Well, zero slope changes to positive slope here. That would not be an inflection point because I'm not going from negative to positive or positive to negative. I'm changing from zero to something. And then I change to zero, and then I go to positive slope, and then zero slope, and then negative slope, and then positive slope. Oh, that's it. This is a point of inflection for F. This is not a point of inflection for G, which I'm looking at, okay? But X equals four is where the slope changes sign from negative to positive, decreasing G to increasing G. And decreasing means G prime is negative, increasing means G prime is positive, so that's it. Slope of G changes at X equals four. Okay, and so I would write x equals 4. f has an inflection point. Let's write out the whole thing. f has inflection point at x equals 4 since, and then I would use this as my answer. f double prime changes sign. Or you could say f double prime goes from negative to positive. And that's it.